Hello everyone, Dan Scott here and welcome back to another video where I am building off the knowledge of my previous video titled Two Origins, where we are going to talk about the then cosmos or world, 2 Peter 3.6. And in my previous video Two Origins, we saw in John 1.1 1, 1 how the word, the Logos God, in the feminine origin was brought forth out from a masculine origin that being the father, the head of Christ. And the feminine origin out of the masculine origin is represented in the Word, the only become God, John 1.18, who as an origin is the Elohim of the creation. And the Word of John 1.1 1, 1 is the Elohim who spoke. So he is the Elohim of Genesis chapter 1 verse 1. In the origin, or the feminine Reshith, Elohim created the heavens and the earth land. And the purpose of this video is to show in the Word of God that Genesis chapter 1 verse 1 that states in the origin, the feminine Reshith, points to a heavens and earth land out of old. Not the present heavens and earth land, but what Peter terms the then cosmos. And we will see this very clearly as we progress through this study. So let's begin by considering 2 Peter chapter 3 verse 5 where he writes, For it is unnoticed to them which is a nice way of saying ignorant, and I might add it is unnoticed to most today. To those willing this, meaning willfully ignorant, that there were heavens out of old, but now pay attention because he says, and an earth land out of water and through water. These are very important details to pay attention to because we see two different prepositions here. One is out of and one is through. The earthland out of water here is in conjunction with the then cosmos, which came through water according to Genesis chapter 1 verse 2, which we will get into detail in a moment. Now, in the origin when Elohim created, it was according to the glory that he had beside the Father before the being of the cosmos, John 17, 5. And as the creator of the cosmos, including the then cosmos, he existed before the present heavens and earth land, or the present cosmos. And as we will see, there is a transition from the then cosmos to the present cosmos. So the point is, is that he, the Logos God, had a glory in the then cosmos as the creator of it. And of course, his glory carried over into the now present cosmos, where he lowered himself and became flesh and had tent among us. So I said all that to say that I believe the context here in John 17, 5, before the being of the cosmos, is the present cosmos. And what Peter understood was that the out of water he is referring to in verse 5 is not what we see in Genesis chapter 1, verse 2. No, the through water points to Genesis chapter 1, verse 2, when the earthland of the then cosmos was down flooded and wholly loosened away through water. But not only that, the heavens also were wholly loosened away. So let's read it again. For it is unnoticed to them, to those willing this, that there were heavens out of old and an earth land out of water and through water. And when we read the entire passage of 2 Peter chapter 3, verses 5 through 13, we find a threefold representation of the heavens and the earth land. We see that there is a heavens and an earth land out of old, verse 5, which again is called the then cosmos in verse 6, the same earth land out of water. But then in verse 7 we see there's a heavens and an earth land now present, which you could say is a present cosmos, world, and also a new heavens and a new earth land, verse 13. And what these verses also reveal is that the downcast of the first cosmos or the first world the then cosmos, was through water and the downcast of the present cosmos will be through fire. But back here in verse 6, what Peter is describing is the event of Genesis chapter 1 verse 2 as to what it had become. That is the earth land that existed out of water, where the earth land became a chaos and discomposure and darkness was on the face of the tumult, etc. Now, because Peter is making a comparison between heavens and earth land out of old, which both heavens and earth land were downcast, wholly loosened away, this downflood of water in 2 Peter 3.6 is not referring to the deluge, the flood of Noah's day. Understand, 
During the flood, the Mabul of Noah's day, neither a large part of the heavenly beings nor the heavens themselves were wholly loosened away. And of course, neither were the animals. Besides, there's evidence that shows that the flood of Noah was not a cosmic wide flood, which could make for another study. But there was a cosmic flood right here in Genesis 1-2. Also, in the consideration of the entire context of 2 Peter chapter 3, verses 5 through 13, the usual interpretation that the present heavens and earth began at the flood of Noah cannot be accepted since this three-world representation deal with a whole-away loosening of the heavens and the earth land, both their beings and their spatial structures, which is identified as a tohu bohu, which we will discuss in a minute which simply did not occur at the time of Noah and the flood. So the cosmos, which was an eon of old, the then cosmos, included the whole away loosening of both the heavens and the earth land. And this is what we read in Genesis chapter 1 verse 2, of which it became. This is the downcast of the cosmos, a phrase appearing nearly a dozen times in the New Testament which state not only from the downcast of the cosmos, but also before the downcast of the cosmos, which we will see the context is twofold, as there was a downcast of a cosmos of old, where at present we exist from that time, from then until now. But there will also be a downcast of the present cosmos, where we presently exist before the downcast of this cosmos, from now until then. And it will be such a kind as it has not become from the origin of the cosmos, that is, the present cosmos, until that time. Matthew 24, 21. Now here in Genesis chapter 1, verse 2, the Devar accurately translates the Hebrew word hayah as became, of which the then cosmos became, okay, a tohu bohu, a chaos and discomposure. And darkness was on the face of the tumult. And why was there darkness? Because the light that was present in that cosmos of old became darkness during the transition from the then cosmos into the present cosmos, from the eon of old into the eon of present, which Hebrews 1.8 describes as an eon of an eon. And the same darkness that occurred in the transition from the then cosmos into the present cosmos will happen again, which consummates in another holoway loosening of the present heavens and earth land, this time through fire, 2 Peter 3, 7. So a repeating of the darkness as read in Genesis 1, 2 can be seen in verses such as Matthew chapter 24, verse 29, which I might add is after the great affliction in accord with the great judgment. This will be the pinnacle that leads into the new heavens and new earth. The sun will be darkened, and the moon will not give its shimmer, and the stars will fall out of the heavens, and the ability powers of the heavens will be shaken. Again we read, For the stars of the heavens and their kesselim, meaning their constellations, will not illuminate their light. Darkened is the sun in its coming out, and the moon will not cause its light to brighten. Isaiah chapter 13 verse 10. And this pattern of what happened then will happen again is what we read in Ecclesiastes chapter 1 verse 9. What is it that which has become? It is that which will become. And what is it that which has been made? It is that which will be made and there is nothing wholly new under the sun. And let's talk about this tohu bohu in a little more detail here in Genesis chapter 1 verse 2 which is commonly understood as a formless and void. However, those with the help of a concordance can look all of the occurrences of the word tohu up, can see that the translation formless is inappropriate. And to render the Hebrew bohu as void can hardly be justified when reading it in Isaiah chapter 34 verse 11, because to call stones void makes no sense at all. And without going into great detail concerning these two Hebrew words, tohu bohu, and their various parts of speech, what these words they mean is that the chaos and discomposure was an inner and an outer destruction, or rather whole away loosening. The tohu was the chaos of the outer confusion, and the discomposure was that of the inner derangement, that is the bohu, which created a tumult 
enclosed in darkness involving both the heavens and the earth land, which cannot be placed within the timeline of Noah's flood, but also cannot be placed within the process of the present creation, the present heavens and earth land. Because if this was so, then this state of chaos and discomposure would have to have existed after the creation. It would have had to have been in relationship to the origin of the present cosmos. But the word of truth is clear that God does not create things tohu bohu, chaos and discomposure. For thus speaks Yahweh, the creator of the heavens, he, the Elohim, the former of the earth land, and its maker, he, he prepared it, he did not create it as a chaos, which here is tohu, Isaiah chapter 45, verse 18. So to translate Genesis chapter 1, verses 1 and 2 as saying, in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth, and the earth land was, in the present tense, tohu bohu, totally contradicts this verse. Besides the Hebrew word here, heya, means became, become, came to pass, not was. And why do things become a chaos and discomposure? A tohu bohu, that is. Well, for one thing, the absence of light. I'm not speaking about physical light, but the light of the cosmos, the light of righteousness, the light of truth. And as the light of the truth diminishes... God's judgment begins when the sons of light and the sons of the day are taken out of the midst, resulting in an outer darkness and a holaway loosening of dishonoring human. 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 7. Being that time of God's wrath and his righteous judgment, when those who love the darkness will be consumed by it. So, the event of Genesis chapter 1, verse 2 was the result of a righteous judgment of an old heavens and earth land. Again, in an eon or a concealment time of old, doomed to repeat, but next time with fire, not water. So the sequence from Genesis chapter 1, verse 2 to verse 3 undoubtedly shows that there is no break in the time sequence. It's simply transitional. There is no gap. And the reason for those who heed and teach a gap theory is due to their unnoticing that there was a heavens out of old and an earth land out of water and through water, according to that transitional eon of the eon of old. So the culmination of Genesis 1-2 was that evil and darkness increased to a point where God withdrew his light, and it became darkness, where in Genesis 1-3, the light of the first day represents a breakthrough of the light into the darkness on the first day. Again, it was simply transitional. Now, another problem in our identifying the timeline of this tohu bohu involves a mistranslation of the Greek word katabole, which has freely been translated foundation, as well as conceive. But it means to be downcast. And it's not the beginning or foundation of something, it's the casting down of it. And this definition at Bible Hub here on the screen is very misleading where here the HELPS Word Studies provides more valuable information than these definitions, because kata bole is derived from the preposition kata and its stem, balo. And the preposition kata denotes that which is downward motion. And regarding the stem balo, in a family of words meaning to cast, there should be no doubt as to the meaning due to the word family it is contained within, meaning to cast or to drive. Not lay, as in a foundation, but away cast, outcast, downcast, through cast. It has to do with the tearing down of something, not the building up of something, as in a foundation or a founding. In fact, the word diabolos is from the preposition dia, through, and bole, which identifies him as the through caster, which according to the transition we've been talking about should bring more light to your thinking. To trans katabole as foundation or beginning is absolutely absurd. And no wonder so many are in the dark to these truths. Because the word of God has been so mangled and twisted by so-called Bible scholars. And in the writ of the new covenant, we find three times the expression before the downcast of the cosmos. Which is referring to the time before the downcast of the present heavens and earth land the present cosmos, 
where some believe and teach that the before is referring to before Genesis 1-2, before the downcast of the then cosmos. To be honest, I also believe this for a term, but the Lord, through the spirit of my thinking, has given me new light on this. So again, the before the downcast of the cosmos is speaking to that time before the downcast of this cosmos. This is the context of these verses. Now also we find seven times the expression from the downcast of the cosmos. Not before, but from. And this phrase is what is looking back to Genesis chapter 1 verse 2 from the time of the downcast of the then cosmos, onward from that time, proceeding into the present cosmos. And with this understanding, consider Luke 13.30, which reads, And perceive there are last ones who will be foremost ones, and there are foremost ones who will be last. And although this truth can be seen in many parallels, Truth can be seen in it in regards to before the downcast and from the downcast. Consider the last ones who will be foremost ones. This can be seen in parallel to the statement Paul makes, stating, So as he outchose us in him before the downcast of the cosmos, that is the present cosmos, to be holy and defiled ones in his down eyeing in love. This is because of the unveiling of mysteries that previous generations did not see or perceive concerning the upward calling and the guardship of the dwelling law. And that having been revealed on at the last part of the time, before the downcast of the present cosmos, 1 Peter 1.20, are mysteries that past generations were willing to perceive but they did not. Luke 10.24 and that we can know the mysteries of Christ, unlike generations past, among the last ones, is advantageous, meaning creating favorable circumstances that increase the chances of success or effectiveness, according to the counsel of the will of God. And the fact that God is opening up the perception to some of us to see these things now shows us how much closer we are getting to this final event, that is the downcast of the present cosmos. Because the last part of the time Peter wrote was 2,000 years ago. Now, what about those from the downcast of the cosmos? This is the context of the foremost ones who will be last, who will come in subsequent to the foremost ones, of which the regency having been prepared, according to their allotment, looks backwards from the downcast of the cosmos, not before, but from, who also allot the regency, Matthew 25, 34, where in fact in Matthew 25, 40, Jesus calls these my least brothers. And we can prove in the word of God that from the downcast of the cosmos is referring to Genesis 1, 2, long before the flood of Noah's day. Because in Luke chapter 11, verse 50, we find a statement that makes the chronological placement of this event easier for us to identify. We read, so that the blood of all the prophets, that being poured out from the downcast of the cosmos, may be extraordinarily sought from this generation. Now, in the next verse, verse 51, we read, from the blood of Abel, which gives us a more precise understanding of the time of the downcast. Pre-Noah, because it's from the blood of Abel, a prophet who existed before Noah. So this passage speaks of the blood poured out in a specific period of time, that being from the downcast of the cosmos. And this also shows us unequivocally that the event of the downcast of the cosmos lies before the time of Abel, before the time of Noah's flood. So there is no doubt that the event of the downcast is not to be confused with the flood of Noah's day. Another interesting point is that the word downcast, katabole, is found 13 times in the New Testament, and 10 of them are in connection with the word cosmos, often translated world. And in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 11, it is mentioned in connection with Sarah's pregnancy. In faithing, also Sarah herself took ability to the downcast of seed. Not conception of seed, but downcast of seed. And in the various translations of katabole and sperma, or seed, translated as conceive seed in the King James Bible, 
again, twists the meaning. And much has been lost in our understanding due to the inexact twisting of this phrase. Downcast of seed, not conception. Which downcast of seed is from the ovaries into the womb of the woman, into the realm of darkness. And in the Hebrew language, the womb is seen as a place of mercy. And in the womb, the seed develops in order that it may come into its light existence at its designated time. So the parallel here in Genesis chapter 1 verse 2, in the bringing forth the earthland back out of the darkness and the water, figurative to a womb, is profound. And one of the parallels seen here is the connection between the first human being, the first Adam, and the last Adam, the Christ. After the earth land was downcast in the water, it became fruitful again on the third day. And the first Adam was created out of the dust of the earth. Genesis chapter 1 verses 10 through 13. In parallel to the resurrection of the last Adam, Jesus Christ, on the third day. So that between the downcast or the burial and the coming forth, the resurrection, there are three days which again are truths that are quite profound in relationship to the deepest context of what the third day represents. And the fact that there existed a heavens and earth land of old is critical for understanding very important truths, such as the timeline of the emergence of darkness and evil, and the source of this rebellion and failience, which did not have its origin in the present cosmos but also of which darkness carried over into the present heavens and earth land, as seen with the serpent and that tree being of the knowledge of good and evil. Not to mention further transgression through angels, which I discuss in my video as in the days of Noah. And understanding the many statements and truths in God's word requires us to notice that there was a then cosmos that existed and not remain willfully ignorant. And those who still want to ask, well, what benefit is the knowledge about a past cosmos or past events? Well, they need to read very carefully 2 Peter chapter 3, verses 3 through 5, because it concerns the last days, things that we must know beforehand, before the downcast of the cosmos, the present cosmos. We read, knowing this beforehand, that in the last days scoffers will come with scoffing going according to their own desires, and saying, where is the promise of his parousia, which many term his second coming? For since the fathers were made to slumber, all abides throughout thus, from the origin of the creation. And note here that he speaks of the origin of the creation, not the origin of the cosmos of which creation he is referring to is Genesis 1.1, in accord with the creator of it and the creation of it in the time of the then cosmos. Because here all abides throughout thus includes the then cosmos. And in the next verse, the for here is for this cause, concerning what we just read, that it is unnoticed to them willing this, that there were heavens out of old, and in earth land out of water and through water, having taken stand together due to the word of God. The same word that existed in the origin, the feminine origin. See my previous video, Two Origins. So when one reads these verses very carefully and does not miss the word for, for this cause, for this reason, is in fact the unnoticing of the heavens and earth land out of old which cause of the downcast of this cosmos carried over into present. So we should not forget that a lack of knowledge regarding the origin, the true origin of the creation, will also limit our understanding regarding the origin of evil. And I'm not only speaking about the origin in relationship to the time of, but the source, which did not come out of the two origins but another origin in relationship to a being, and as a matter of fact, a son. Not the only become son from beside the father, but another son, an origin being. Where in Isaiah chapter 46 verse 9, we see here that God asks us to do a special remembrance. Remember the original ones, according to the former events, from the eon, the eon of old, which corruption carried over into the present eon. 
And these fallen origin beings, these are the same origin beings of Ephesians chapter 6 verse 12. And in accord with the coming transition, the downcast of the present cosmos, we read here in Isaiah, For I am El, and no one else is Elohim, and no one is verge-like to me. Of which verge is defined as an edge or a border. Which border will be that transition, that downcast. When again, history repeats itself at the altogether finishing of this now present heavens and earth land due to the evil that carried over from an eon of old. And think about it. After the impending transitional eon of the eon, when we enter into the new heavens and new earth and look back, this will be a new from the downcast of the cosmos. From the eon. Or rather, from the eons, plural. Because we will have transitioned from a heavens and earth land of old, then through the heavens and earth land that now is, being two eons, except the events that carry over from the now present eon into the impending new heavens and new earth will not bring forth with it the same darkness and evil. The origin beings, the authorities, the cosmocrats of this very darkness to the bespirited ones of the evilness in the heavenlies on Ephesians 6.12. Because again, in 2 Peter 3.13, we read that righteousness will down dwell. But not only that, the last enemy who is made down unworking is death. 1 Corinthians 15.26 And although down unworking does not mean completely abolished, for those who do not inherit Eonian life, who will exist as human beings in the new earth land, the germ of death will not have the same effect, which can be testified to in Isaiah 65, 20. And understanding the threefold representation of the heavens and earth land, one being out of old, one being present, and the other according to the new, is necessary in identifying the context of certain verses, both in the New Testament and the Old Testament, because there are verses that are speaking of events of the then cosmos, again, such as the origin of evil. So, building on the foundation of the previous video, Two Origins, and now this video, it's my intention to make another video discussing the origin of evil, which had its manifestation in the then cosmos, not the present, due to the rebellion of another sun, another origin of an origin, that is, one of the original ones which I will title The Origin of Evil. So please stay tuned and stay upward turned in the dwelling site of God.